today we are going to see the very basics for a SharePoint development project from Visual Studio. We are starting with a console application and the version being used is SharePoint 2013. So here is an overview of the generic steps you would follow during development in SharePoint. You would be opening Visual Studio in administrator mode that is right click run as administrator then you would create your project in x64 platform in this example we are going to choose c sharp console application then the third step would be you would add the appropriate sharepoint dls from the hive which is a specific sharepoint folder having all the sharepoint dls installed in the sharepoint server the fourth step is to reference the object using the using directive which will take care of disposing the object. Then the fifth step is to write the code for your logic. Here we will be using, we will be reading the SharePoint site collection and displaying few properties of that particular site collection. Then you can debug your code. Let's go ahead for the demo now. This would be a great start for going ahead with all your client side and app development in SharePoint 2013. Log in to your SharePoint server, then right click Visual Studio either at the desktop or from all programs and run as administrator. Now click File, New Project. Under Visual C Sharp, click under Windows, you can choose Console Application. We will rename it as Simple SharePoint Project. Click OK. Then in the project, click F4 to view the properties. Go to the Build tab and change the target platform to X64. Then next step, let's add the references. We will add the reference from the SharePoint Hive. Observe the path. Go to C, go to C, Program Files, Common Files, Microsoft Share, Web Server Extensions, 15 folder, ISAP. Over here, all your SharePoint DLLs are listed. For client applications, you would use Microsoft or SharePoint or client. For examples, for us, let's just go ahead with Microsoft or SharePoint. Now, click OK. Now, go to your code. Write the using directive. To add the reference to your assemblies. Now in your code, let's just start with the reference for a SharePoint site. We will type SP site. You can access the site collection using the SP site object. SP is equal to new sp site so from this server we are going to reference the url http intranet.contoso.com and we will simply display a property of the site collection
we will display the last content modified date. Now let's start debug. So the last content modified date is displayed in the console window. Now the code ran well, good. Many times this is not the case. So what would you check? First step, ensure you open the project as an administrator. Next, in the project properties, ensure that the target pl platform is x64 and the .NET framework you're using is .NET Framework 4.5. Next, ensure that you've added the corresponding DLL Microsoft or SharePoint and then you've used the using reference in your code. As a good practice, it is always good to use the using command for disposing the SharePoint SP object. So let's just try the using command. When you use use, the SP object is disposed after the objects have been referenced and used. Sometimes when this, uh, when you do not know the URL or when the reference to the URL is failing, you can try accessing with the GUID. In that case, the PowerShell is of great help. Log in to power, open your PowerShell Management Studio and add the PowerShell snap-in, add ps snap-in microsoft.sharepoint.powershell. How do you open? Go to Start, All Programs. You can either access SharePoint 2013 Management Shell from the Quick Link or go to All Programs, Microsoft SharePoint 23 Pro, 2013 Products. Here you see 2013 Management Shell. Oh, run it as an administrator, add the PS near snap in, add PS snap in Microsoft or SharePoint or PowerShell, then get SP site. So here you can ensure that the site is actually referenced properly without any issues. And if your code and console is not working, okay, there's a problem with the code. Then get the SP ID. Just put the SP, get SP site in a variable SP and just get the SP.ID that gives the uh, GUID dollar SP dot ID. So using this GUID, you can hopefully the code will run without any failure. Let's just try to reference the site object using the GUID. So for that, you would go reference GUID is equal to new GUID of the GUID which you got from the PowerShell. Then reference the SP site using SP site sp is equal to new sp site of the guid and then you can print any property you want here the url is printed another option is to print let's try some other variable let's try the usage and run for running you can hit f5 mm, so this is what you got but this is not we wanted let's so let's try to get further property let's try the discussion storage discussion storage is zero let's try the storage now you can just hit dot and print the property which you want access the property which you want bingo here's a more useful information the storage used by the site is 24527173 so let's just go to the summary of what we did today so we saw a very basic steps needed to do start with SharePoint development in Visual Studio. As the first step, you open up the Visual Studio as an administrator, then create a new project, set the target platform to x64 and ensure it is .NET Framework 4.5, then add the necessary DLLs from the SharePoint Hive, that is C program files, common files, the steps uh, C program files, common files, so this is the high path for SharePoint. C program files, common files, Microsoft shared web server extensions. For SharePoint 2013, the folder is 15. For older versions, like 2010, it would be 14. And then ISAP. So then next step, you would add the using direct using reference for the DLL you added. Then you write the code. And it's a recommended practice to use the using directive to do the natural dispose. 
and then you debug the code. Thank you.